Well, hello everyone, and welcome back to our series on transport in humans. We're going to start this set of videos by looking at ice cream. And you know, I've placed this picture here because it shows you two ways in which ice cream can be served. The single scoop way and the double scoop way, whichever more you prefer. But in a slightly related but unrelated way, there is such a thing called a single circulatory system and a double circulatory system. Now, as we're going to see in this video, in humans, the circulatory system is a double circulatory system. Now, how is that different from a single circulatory system? And what's the advantage of having a double circulatory system? That's what this video is all about. Mm, sorry, nothing to do with ice cream at all. Anyway, if you want to look at the textbook, you can find it on this page. So let's get started. All right, I would like us to start by comparing these two circulatory systems. On the left, you see the circulatory system of a fish. And on the right, the circulatory system of a human being. Now, looking at these two circulatory systems, one at a time, I want us to answer the question, how many times will a red blood cell pass through the heart in one complete cycle? So let's take a look at the fish first. Now imagine if you were a red blood cell in this part of the circulatory system. How many times would you pass through the heart in one complete cycle? Let's have a look. So from here, I would move through the heart once and back to this point. So in one complete cycle, the red blood cell passes through the heart once. So the fish has what we call a single circulatory system. A single circulatory system is one where blood passes through the heart once. In one complete cycle. Now let's turn our attention to the human circulatory system. Now imagine if I was a red blood cell in this part of the circulatory system. How many times will I pass through the heart in one complete cycle? Let's try. Or why don't you try first, pause the video, and then come back again once you've tried. Alright, so let's try. So from here we go passing through once in the heart. Pumped out, passing through twice to the heart, one complete cycle. So do you count? In one complete cycle, the red blood cell passes through the heart twice. So this is what we call a double circulatory system. Right? It is a circulatory system where blood passes through the heart twice in one complete cycle. Let's take a closer look at what happens in a single circulatory system and a double circulatory system. So in a single circulatory system, we start at the heart. The heart pumps out deoxygenated blood to the lungs. Right? The blood picks up oxygen in the lungs, so it's now oxygenated. And oxygenated blood moves from the lungs to the body to supply the body with oxygen. Okay, so oxygen moves out from the blood into the body and then deoxygenated blood then moves back to the heart and then that's one complete cycle. So in one complete cycle, the blood passes through the heart only once, single circulation. Now let's look at double circulation. And again, beginning at the heart. So we start the heart, deoxygenated blood, this blue arrow, is pumped out to the lungs. The blood picks up oxygen in the lungs. Now, instead of the blood moving directly to the body, the blood moves back to the heart. And then from the heart, it is pumped out to the body, oxygenated blood to the body, supplying the body with oxygen. And then the deoxygenated blood is brought back to the heart again. So for one complete cycle. So in one complete cycle, from here to here, and then to the body, back to the heart, in one complete cycle, the blood passes through the heart twice, double circulation. So in a double circulatory system, blood passes through the heart twice in one complete cycle. Okay, let's take a closer look at double circulation. 
Now double means two. So double circulation is made up of two circulations. Now each of these two circulations has a name. The first circulation is when blood is pumped from the heart to the lungs, right? Deoxygenated blood to the lungs, and then the blood that is now oxygenated coming back to the heart. This is the first circulation and it's called pulmonary circulation. Pulmonary means lungs to do with the lungs. So pulmonary circulation or the pulmonary circuit. Okay, deoxygenated blood from the heart to the lungs and then oxygenated blood from the lungs to the heart. The second circulation is from the heart pumping out oxygenated blood to the body and then deoxygenated blood back from the body to the heart. This is called the systemic circulation. Systemic meaning uh, to the rest of the body systems. Okay, so from the heart, oxygenated blood is pumped to the body and then deoxygenated blood is brought back to the heart. The systemic circulation. So we have two circulations. Question. So what is the advantage of double circulation compared to single circulation? Now, I am not saying that double circulation is always better than single circulation. Now, both circulations have their own advantages and disadvantages. And I'm sure there are some ways in which single circulation is better than double circulation. And for that, maybe you want to read a bit on your own and find out more. But for the rest of this video, we're going to focus on double circulation and why it is advantageous and why it is good for human beings to have such a system. So think about it for a moment. What do you think is the advantage of double circulation compared to single circulation? Pause for a while and I'll come back to you in just a bit. So the main advantage of double circulation is that it allows blood to be pumped into each circulation at a different pressure. So recall that in double circulation, there are two circulations, right? First, there's the pulmonary circulation, where the heart pumps blood to the lungs and it comes back. And then there's the systemic circulation, where the heart pumps blood to the body and it comes back. Now, double circulation allows the heart to pump blood to the lungs at one pressure and to pump blood to the body at a different pressure. Now, this is important because the pulmonary circulation may have different properties and different requirements compared to the systemic circulation. So it's helpful that both circulations can have a slightly different blood pressure, as we shall see. Now, in single circulation, this is not possible. Why? Because there's only one circulation, right? From the heart to the lungs, to the body and back. So there's no way for the heart to pump blood to the lungs at one pressure and to pump blood to the body at a different pressure. No, there's only one circulation and one pressure within this, uh, one type of pressure within this circulation. So here's a rather complicated graph and it shows how blood pressure changes as blood moves through the systemic circulation and the pulmonary circulation. Now don't worry, we're going to have a closer look together. And as we look through together, I want you to consider this question. How is the blood pressure different in the systemic circulation compared to the pulmonary circulation? So let's look at our graph. Here on the vertical axis, we see the blood pressure. And on the horizontal axis, we see uh, the different regions of the circulatory system from the systemic circulation to the pulmonary circulation. So here at the start is actually where blood leaves the heart to enter the systemic circulation. That means the rest of the body. You can see that blood leaves at a very high pressure. Right? Now the pressure drops of course as the blood moves from arteries to capillaries and then to the veins. Finally, going back to the heart, the pressure is very low. Now the heart pumps again Right, blood goes back into the heart, it pumps again and the pressure increases as blood goes into the pulmonary circulation into the lungs. Right, and then it goes to the lungs, again the pressure drops as it goes to the capillaries in the lungs and then to the veins and back to the heart at a very low pressure. So actually you can see two similar shapes here, right? The systemic circulation, 
pressure is high initially then it drops. Pulmonary circulation, pressure is high initially when it leaves when the blood leaves the heart and then it drops. But what is the difference between a systemic and pulmonary circuit? Well, I hope that you can see that the pressure in the systemic circulation is much higher in general. Right? See, at the start of the systemic circulation, it's like 110. But the pressure in the pulmonary circulation tends to be lower. Right? So even at the start of the pulmonary circulation, it's only about 20. Now, why is that the case? Now, double circulation allows a different pressure in each circulation, and that's important. So let's see why. So the first advantage of double circulation is that blood can be pumped to the rest of the body, right? that is the systemic circulation, at a very high pressure, and a much higher pressure compared to the pulmonary circulation. Now, why is that important? Because the systemic circulation is actually much larger. If you imagine from your heart to the rest of the body, there's so many blood vessels. So you need a higher pressure. And it also allows oxygen to be supplied to the tissues at a higher rate. Right? So we need a high pressure here because the systemic circulation is very large, very long, and also it allows oxygen to be supplied at a very high rate. So how about the pressure in my pulmonary circulation? Why does it tend to be lower? Well, Blood is pumped to the lungs at a lower pressure, and this allows more time for the exchange of gases to take place in the lungs. Imagine if we pumped blood to the lungs at a very high pressure, it would just go in the lungs very quickly and then come back. There will be very little time for the blood to pick up oxygen and to release carbon dioxide at the lungs. All right, so that's why we have different pressures in the systemic circulation and the pulmonary circulation because both have a different requirement. In the systemic circulation, I want oxygen to be supplied to the body as fast as possible, so high pressure. In the pulmonary circulation, I want blood to have more time for exchange of gases in the lungs, so a lower pressure. And also the pulmonary circulation is a bit uh, smaller, there are fewer blood vessels there to the lungs only as compared to the whole body. So I hope you got that and uh, that's all for this video. In the next video, we're going to take a closer look at the heart, the structures and the different blood vessels that surround it. So see you there.